React India. Thank you, Ankit. Yes, I do eat breakfast. Thank you. Um, I think he, he just uh, messed up the script a little bit. I feel little energy is little down in this room. All of you say, hey! hey! One more time! Hey! More! Hey! Good, good, good. All of you are awake right now and while they are setting up my laptop, um, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Rakesh. I'm CTO from Publicis Sapient. And I think, how many of you heard of Publicis Sapient? Lots of us. Okay, great. So I don't have to talk about Publicis Sapient. We work in digital business transformation and there is no bigger transformation which is happening right now because of Gen AI. Gant just talked to you about AI and now we are taking AI which is generally single purpose, right? Most of the models which were there until last year were like, they can do one task pretty well. Either they can translate pretty well, they can detect a face pretty well or they can uh, do a sentiment analysis pretty well. The sentiment analysis model cannot detect faces, the faces model cannot detect uh, uh, tags or cannot summarize documents. What happened last year was we started getting this Gen AI, the uh, generative AI part of it, which started taking the single purpose model and creating more generic and more general purpose things. So it started opening up possibilities for us. So what I wanted to talk to you about is how do you sort of explore these properties? Uh, Gan talked about a lot of ideas. How do you take these ideas into reality? For that, you need a lot of creativity. So we'll talk about a little bit about creativity, why creativity is required in transformation, and why uh, and how you can do it in React. So let us talk about scaling creativity. Now, I just introduced myself. Let me just skip the ideas. Everyone has ideas. Uh, have you heard the statement, ideas are cheap? Right? Everyone has ideas. I think as humanity, we survived uh, millions of years. We will not survive the next 50 years, but yeah, no kidding. We will survive the next 50 years because we have always been a species with ideas. We had a lot of ideas, but we took so much time to evolve. That is because we needed resources, right? Just ideas is not enough. You need resources to make something of the ideas, right? Like you need metals, you need uh, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the land, you need the uh, uh, different uh, natural materials, etc. But just resources and ideas are not enough. What you need is also skills. I can give you all the raw material, I can give you the ideas, but you can't do anything without having the right skills. Unless you are a goldsmith, or an ironsmith, or you are an engineer, you, you can't do anything with all of this. But with Gen AI, what is happening is, you already have ideas, resources have become cheaper. In the last 50 years, it was so easy, right? A computer which was to, took a whole room. Now our phone is more powerful than all the rockets which are being launched right now, right? Um, and in order to create a web server, when I first started my uh, career, I had to crimp my own network cables. That is how we started, right? So getting up a single web page involved you taking a crimper, shaving off the wires, crimping it, connecting it to a router, configuring the router first, then hoping that your web server will run, and then finally, you might get one web page view if the internet provider works, right? That is how it used to be. But now, 80 year olds are writing app stores, uh, what you can say, uh, apps in the app store. They're creating websites and it is easy, right? Most of them are free un unless you hit a million users or like a, a billion transactions, everything is free. So resources are free. So what my statement is, resources are free if you're trying to create any software, right? Until you become wildly successful. So what is lacking? What is lacking all of us to create apps is the skills, right? In order to do this, day by day it is complicated, right? All of you must have seen, since all of you are React developers, you must have seen that uh, meme about, yeah, React is easy. First you need to learn, first decide which framework you want, then you not, uh, need to learn whether you want to use Webpack, you want to use, then, then you need to figure out whether you want to use GraphQL, then you need to figure, figure out what you want to use on the server side, and the list goes on, right? Like, and someone will come and say, why are you using uh, React, use Next.js, and someone will come and say, why are you using uh, uh, CSS, use uh, uh, Tailwind, and it just ha goes on and on and on. So how many skills will you learn? How many skills will you learn, right? Like, so in spite of having uh, the ideas, what will you do with it? Because you don't have the skills. Even if you use something, people will say, that is not the right thing to use, right? But Gen AI started addressing this. How many of you used ChatGPT to generate a piece of code in a framework which you didn't know? Almost all of you, right? So now all of you are polyglots. All of you learned a new skill in five minutes, right? 
if you wanted to run a docker container and never worked on docker container oh i have a react app i don't i will not call my devops person i'll go to chat gpt and say please create a docker file for a node js app and it will create for you right you're done so you got a new skill now you're the devops person now you'll go and say okay i have this uh, api contract can you sort of generate a graphql uh, uh, manifest file for this and it'll it'll create it for you right so it is easy so skills have become easier so now what is remaining now that these two are already there in your plate what requires is this yeah what we require is creativity now how you put all these things together is going to make the difference ideas are cheap resources are cheap skills my uh, my 8 year old daughter is able to generate code and i'm like no no this is not good i learned 20 years to do this right like she can't be doing this right but and then the code is actually better than mine right like so that really uh, makes me think then i have to challenge myself and i come up with a new thing say no creativity is important and for creativity you need experience and you need to figure out how to do things and let me sorry what we said is okay now you you are you're being creative let us use gen ai but gen ai is like fire right when the first man discovered fire they were scared they were running away from it few people decided saying that okay when if you are far enough and if you use a stick and poke it and pick it up in your stick it will not hurt you right and they started using it carefully then they started burning other people's houses right <laughs> then people came and said no you should have ethics use fire for the right things kill the animals not the houses then the governance came and said said no you can't kill the animals too right they are our food we'll just use it in limited things so you you went from ethics to governance and then what comes is you always need a driver for a change right you just don't do something new because something is new though all of us in this room must have done because the next new cool framework has come right no 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 just kidding i never did that okay i always do because there is a driver for change right now with gen ai at publicis sapient when we are transforming our clients we decided that what you have to put consolidate all these ideas into few drivers which are causing changes i think these are the new drivers which we feel which are making our clients and partners compelled to change their application first thing is generative content content is no longer moving from one place to another place you need to generate the content there is generative software software is just not written and built it is also generated then generative interfaces what i mean by generative interfaces is plugins all of you must have used chat uh, uh, chat gpt plugins right now what are plugins plugins are nothing but api contracts but at the end of the day your interfaces are not hard coded at design time or build time but it's decided at run time that is what generative interfaces mean right so so your software understands at run time what interfaces i need to use i will decide to use this plugin versus this plugin i will use to use uh, um uh, an instacart plugin versus an uber plugin right so it needs to decide what it is going to do and that that is based on the genai concept we are seeing and the next thing is generative robots generative robots are nothing but agents it is basically the robotic process automation taken to the next level robotic process automation is nothing but your business process automated but generative robots are deciding at real time what the process should be right and then and they're going to do it so what i wanted to talk a little bit about today is how these things are going to affect the architecture because that is more important you can't use gen ai um uh, to do uh, we have to move beyond the poc stages right yes we are working on pocs they are all cool everyone looks at the demo and say oh this is looking cool right i never did it before but i can't use it in my real application so how do i sort of get it to a real application let us took a deeper dive of this one and i wanted to put it this chart how many of your uh, managers and directors and uh, vice presidents asked me saying that oh i read that gen ai makes coding easy so why are you taking so much time did you hear how many of you heard that you will not have jobs energy guys yes no they are afraid <laughs> okay <laughs> don't be afraid so we generally sort of uh, took a cut at different stages of sdlc and said like roughly you can at the end of the day you can still yes you can save 20 to 40% of the code but if if that is what you are going to do this is the term we are going to use you will become a fast caterpillar if you are using gen ai just to save time just to uh, optimize what you are doing and you do the same things faster so you are a faster caterpillar right you are not going to become a butterfly 
to become a butterfly, you need to create drastically different solutions. And that is what I wanted to talk about. How do you about go, go to care about? So it, the question is about how. So let me quickly take a very um, crash course in computer architecture. Everyone knows this diagram? I took it from my daughter's third class book. No, seriously, I'm not joking. The computer science book has this. It says IPO architecture. This is what computer architecture is all about. Now, what happened with, uh, uh, gen uh, with uh, AI, uh, I'll talk about AI, is AI basically reversed this, right? Saying that you put the data you, you, you into the uh, processing, right? You do a training, and then that becomes a model, right? And that is the, basically the code which is driving. Now, what happens is, because of Gen AI, you took this scenario, and what is input becomes intent. I, I want you to clearly understand this, right? The biggest difference is, Earlier, we had very fixed uh, scenarios. Most of you are working in front end, so don't know that. There is a text box, there is a list box, there is a uh, radio button. They're all fixed inputs. Like, there's no choice in that. Now, what Gen AI did is you can make it a little bit more generic. This is an image, and I'm looking for a product like this. Right? That's the intent. Or you are saying to that, saying that, I want to have a barbecue party next Sunday. Show me the products. Right? You didn't say that I'm searching for a grill. I'm, not, I'm searching for tongs. I'm searching for a sauce. You basically telling your intent why what you are trying to shop, and the program basically gives these are the recommendations for you, right? That is what is going to happen, and what you are going to get in this one is not an output. It is not a specific output, but possibilities. You might possibly want to buy all this, right? So this is how the apps will evolve, right? The input to output will become a lot grayer and blurrer, and you give the choice back to the user, saying that like, look. I'm giving you choices which you didn't think existed. So why don't you take this and uh, look at this? So I'm, I'm, I'm going really quickly. Please catch me outside uh, if you want to talk more about this. If you take any architecture, uh, I, was, I was there in the architecture space for uh, a lots of years. No matter what all the architects say, I basically compress all architectures into this model, right? It might be sync, async, and all kinds of uh, fancy stuff people use. But at the end of the day, this is what your architecture is. You have a systems of record. You have a set of business services. And then you have a UI, right? You, you, you take the, um, sorry, uh, you, you take the data, um, you aggregate it, and then you render it. Today, what I wanted to talk about is where the four drivers fit in. Generated con uh, content basically fits it between the aggregation step and the rendering. So your CMS is giving you some data, and then you have to render it to the screen. Now, between your CMS and render, you might decide, I want to summarize it. I want to generate tags on the fly, right? So when you do those kinds of stuff, you are generating content, or you are generating images on the fly. You are generating, uh, uh, you, you are expanding images. So those are the things which uh, generate to content happens here. The generative interfaces happen here. Your business services decides, should it go to the systems of record or should it go to uh, interface A, B, C, or something? Like those are the plugins, right? Which it decides where it needs to sort of go. And so between aggregate and fetch is where your generative interfaces apply. And your generative engineering applies between the input and validation, right? How does, like, you, you need dynamic code in order to validate um, what the user is sort of generating. One example is what Gantt was talking about, right? He gave an example of, People uploaded an image, and the validation is happening on the client side, right? Now, what if I wanted to do, like, for you all must have visited Amazon site, right? There's reviews, and you can upload an image, right? You can upload an uh, image for review saying, this is how the product looked. Now, Amazon wanted to basically say, look, I don't want you to upload if that image doesn't match my product. Now, that requires a generative engineering step because every product is different. So your model needs to first detect what is the product being uploaded, and should I allow that product? And is that product related to my product which you, are, uh, you bought? Right? So you can do that step on the uh, client side itself and don't take the pass the liability back to, the, uh, back to your server. And then generative agencies where it decides where to store forward, where to generate alerts, whom should I monitor, etc. But since this is a React conference, I'll stick to the generative content part of it and very quickly show you some examples of how we at Publicis Sapient are using it uh, to uh, create transformation. So generative content, um, I'll, I'll first show you some example. All of you have seen this example. This is an example from Amazon. So Amazon basically is saying that before you write a customer review, I will tell you what the review of the product is, is based on all the reviews which I already got. Right? So it is basically telling, this is like, like a summarization of all the reviews, saying that this is an AI-generated review. 
And Google is working on this, where is there, these are for different sizes. Um, it is taking the product and generating a generative image of the model, right? Uh, these are all generated models. So that like uh, you, you, it is um, uh, it is more sp apt to looking at looking your product on the right uh, scenarios. Like we, we we have done similar things like that. Like a person is buying a tent. Now, if the person is a family, you want to show how the tent looks on a garden rather than tent looking on a hiking trip, which which a college student might want. So you might want to change your product images on the fly based on the context, and that context will know only at real time at the client side. You will not know it at the server side. So how do you sort of uh, do these kind of applications? Let us quickly go. So I took an example of this, right? Like this is another feature which got recently released uh, on Amazon, where they said that, okay, the last 100 reviews, these are, these are roughly what the positive keywords are in the reviews, right? So, so that you don't have to read 100 reviews to understand, you, it's basically a very nice way of saying that, okay, this product is stable, this product has a good uh, picture quality, right? Now, how can you do an application like this, right? How many lines of code you need to sort of create this? So I'll, I'll just show you an example, right? So this is one of the libraries which, uh, uh, which we created at uh, Publicis Sapient and we are sort of using this. So it sort of abstracts away all the uh, different APIs right now because APIs are evolving at a very fast rate. Every, way, every week you are seeing a new release, uh, the new API formats which are coming. So we created an abstraction of the API layer. We used both server side and client side. We used TensorFlow.js, we used uh, Transformers, we used uh, Hugging Face, we used LangChain. And then we created an abstract model saying that, okay, now I want you to use OpenAI and I want you to use predict tags. It will create the prompt models, it will do all the things and it will it will decide whether the model has to be downloaded or it has to be done on server side or it has to hit the server direct, uh, the OpenAI server directly and it will give you the results. So it is just two lines of code for you to sort of generate something like this. So you got the content from your CMS, you use this, you create tags. You can also do it like when a user is typing in a search, you can generate tags automatically and use that as facets in order to do your search, right? So that is a lot more uh, easier. We are doing actually for uh, Marriott, uh, we are actually doing this. This is another example of using images. All of you have seen these images, right? Response images as the image size changes. Your, uh, uh, your content uh, person always comes and says, I will create you only two sizes. That's all I am contracted for, right? Like I will not do it more than that, right? And, but you know the sizes are more fluid than that. Every time your new phone releases, there is a new size. So, how can I generate um, an image uh, using outpainting techniques? All of you heard of outpainting techniques? Outpainting techniques is take an image which is existing and generate the rest of the images, predicting what it might be, right? Like the AI predicts what it should be. Now that is a very cool part of it is while it is generating, you can prompt it saying that, okay, generate, generate the rest of the stuff, but think that you are in a garden, think that you are in a, uh, a mountain, think that you are on a beach. Right? And it generates the stuff. So here I basically generated the saying that, okay, think that you are there in a futuristic, uh, uh, some mechanized world or something like that. But it looks like part of the image. It doesn't look like it is uh, different. But this, once you start doing that, right, your, your applications are a lot more personalized, a lot more uh, this one. These are just few examples. I want to talk about how this is done. What we did is like you have a React component. We have what we call our PS Next Gen AI library. It basically uses some industry standard uh, things like LangChain, Transformers, and of course LangChain has support for Hugging Face. So, and then, um, and it also uses server-side components because a lot of these models cannot be downloaded on the uh, client side right now. That is going to change because every day people are releasing new models, quantized models, which can sort of, uh, you can download on the server side. So this will be ready for that. Once the model is ready, the, the code, once you update the next version, it decides whether to go to server side or whether to download it. And uh, you sort of do it. The architecture is pretty simple. You guys can go and create it. Hopefully we'll release it into open source pretty soon. So fo follow us and uh, you will get this. Now, having said that, you will ask, Rakesh, these are all great, but uh, where can we use in the current right now? So we created a list of use cases which we are doing for our clients right now, right? We are using it for tag and uh, uh, facet gener prediction. We are using it for auto summarization. We are using it for auto completion. Auto completion is not just a uh, keyword search and complete from your database. Auto completion is like Gen AI based completion, right? Like Google all, uh, sort of had this always, like how do you and it used to complete, give a set of options. So those kinds of stuff, but contextless to your site which you are creating. Language support, translation support is really good. It's not just about translation, but understanding the intent. Go back to my original thing, what I'm talking about. Understand the user's intent for that language is important, right? And then accessibility, right? Generating, like for example, alt tags on the fly, 
right? If someone uploaded an image and you can generate an alt tag on the fly, that is more accessible rather than waiting for someone to look at the image and generate the alt tag, right? Image description, use the image description and generate. Right now, the uh, the OpenAI APIs, you put an image, it will tell you what the image is about, right? So you can just put that there. Um, in painting, out painting, I showed you an example. Um, then image context and product placement. So this is very important, right? When you're all of you must have uh, uh, seen, right, uh, in movies, right, all your uh, favorite uh, heroes and uh, they're, they're catching one Coke bottle or, like, they subtly place something out there. Companies are going to do this, right? You have a standard image, but while selling, instead of recommendations being line items, they will also be placed inside the image. So you are looking at a, uh, uh, a computer and there will be a subtly a, a, an iPhone put on the side or a watch put on the side, and this can be done by Gen AI very easily. Now, what should I put? Should I put an uh, iPhone or a watch, right? That I'll know from the user context based on what he visited in the previous four uh, web pages. So like that, we can use that and generate on the client side. So people will ask, okay, if you know that I can generate images on the server side, but you need the client side context because you don't know what he visited uh, the three pages before he came here. Um, then what else? The next thing is dynamic layouts. Now, dynamic layouts is something which I really like because... Uh, there are a lot of subtle variations you can do in terms of uh, your text box sizes, your column sizes, and this one. And people said, that, okay, we'll do A-B testing and figure it out, right? But what I, you can go from A-B testing to A to Z testing. What I mean by, uh, by that is your Gen AI can generate so many different variations. It can test so many variations which cannot be done by few people, few people in the design department uh, deciding that we'll test only these four variations. You need to make it more generic and more uh, uh, flexible. And you will not know. People will choose something which is useful to them and let the AI, Gen AI decide what layout is suitable for this person based on his context and how he sort of responds to when a text box is bigger versus smaller, right? It is not a designer who decides, but the, uh, the AI decides based on the effectiveness of it. And it can happen dynamically, right? It, it need not be a big exercise on the back end. You just have to tune your systems and say, you give it the maximum range of variation and say, go figure it out, right? Like what is the ideal for yourself? And that can be done today, right? Next thing is dynamic SEO. How many of you used uh, uh, SEO for, uh, 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 like, used Gen AI for SEO? Has anyone used? Good. If you are not used and if you have to do the SEO stuff, use the, uh, uh, the, the tools which are already in the market, like uh, uh, ChatGPT, Brad, or whatever it is, and you, you will uh, discover how easy it is. Um, and yeah. So using this libraries, what have you done, right? We have created some real-world applications like this. So one of the things what we created at Publicis Sapient is we created our own chat GPT clone, right? And for various reasons, right? Uh, for uh, security and privacy being one of the main things, and then the audits and et cetera. But very quickly, we were able to make this as a platform. We released it as an API. People created a bunch of apps on top of it, including that app, which is the quizzing app, which uh, Silesh has talked about, which all of you can use it. Now, that app also uses uh, uh, these uh, techniques in order to take the transcripts on the fly, summarize transcripts, uh, generate questions, et cetera, right? Like, so these are all the, uh, some of the apps which we have already done. And of course, I can't show the client examples of what we have been doing. There's so many uh, client examples which are already underway right now. There's a huge gold rush uh, in terms of everyone wanting to use that uh, right now. So in summary, I want to come back to this. So hope all of you are clear, right? You have a lot of ideas. I know, I'm sure each one of you, if I meet, they'll give me three ideas of what, what, an, what is the app which you wanted to create. But, uh, and you also might have resources, right? Uh, and uh, uh, people are ready to fund you right now for any kind of idea. Only thing what you're missing is skills. For skills, you, you, you can now use the, the libraries which are available and use the Gen AI to compensate for the skill. But while you're using the skill, you need to use the structure. So I told you a little bit of structure of how you need to follow. Think, think in terms of the architecture. Think in terms of what parts of my architecture are going to change and what parts am I going to do differently. Of course, efficiency, you have to use it. You can do all the things faster. But what will you do with the time saved, right? If you save 20% of the time coding, what are you going to do? Use the 20% time to be more creative and more transformational, right? Try to be more ambitious and aim for bigger things, right? Because at the end of the day, what matters is creativity. And in order for this to be a habit, uh, one of the things what we did at Publicis Sapient is we basically created a set of behaviors for our engineers, saying that like, look, you need to have these behaviors in everything which you do. Only then you can create a 10x value. 
that is a talk for uh, another time but like to learn more about our uh, 10x behaviors please visit our booth which is there outside uh, talk to uh, some of our uh, 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 my peers out here and they will be happy to sort of talk to you about this and last i wanted to acknowledge a little bit most of the images which i used are uh, done by dr subodh dr subodh is uh, a local artist based in goa i got a chance to visit his uh, museum 3 days back and i was blown away so if you have some time please visit uh, museum of goa um, and all this images what he has done uh, were, were, uh, were from his works and i thought it is more apt to use uh, his images because he just uses sand and light and it's he's creative about what he creates right and uh, so since this is a talk about creativity i thought like this is the best thing to sort of use so i have about 5 minutes i can easily take some questions um so anyone has some questions i'll be glad to answer i i uh, i have a very simple question like if the ai gets creative then what will we do <laughs> see um creativity is one thing which is uh, creativity and intelligence i actually don't like the word in ai intelligence because till now no one has been able to define intelligence what we thought was intelligent now computers are doing right so the, like that what we thought creative like we thought of oh, it's creative to create images but still when i look at the images which are created by artist and gen ai i can still tell the difference right so it will still take some time luckily it will not happen in your lifetime um <laughs> i am sure of it but i don't know the answer later but you should not be worried about it because intelligence and creation uh, creativity um i am an optimist as a human species i think we are still way ahead right like what we are seeing is we are just impressed by the capabilities it can do we because of our assumptions we assumed that people cannot do it we assumed that the skills which takes to create this are lot harder uh, what the machines are showing it it is not that hard right so i think all of us I, and i have seen uh, with young children right now given this tools they are being more creative in using those tools to create something more than what we imagined and that is what human species will always do so my thing is uh, if i am if i am alive for the next 20 years i will be blown away by how the world will get disrupted and we'll all be there for a ride right so thank you so much thank you Thanks.